Good morning. It's uh, been a while since I posted. Um, I went down several rabbit holes and it took several months to uh, get this project to work. In fact, it was literally only a few days ago that I found the final piece of the puzzle that made it all work. So this intro video is not going to have a thumbnail of the finished product because I'm starting it all over from scratch um, and we're going to do it from step one every single thing so this series I'm making is about dew tone cyanotypes or basically two layers which gives the illusion of color it's a very limited color palette but um, it, it has a neat effect and can be used if it's used in the right with the right um, picture the right colors it actually looks really well so some history and articles um, I have been trying to do some research to see where the earliest example of this was if you scour the internet you'll find several mentions that it goes back to well, when they were first doing cyanotypes, but I can't find any examples of that, so I don't know where that information is coming from. Um, it would be nice to see that. Um, what originally got me interested was an article on a uh, website called Alternative Photography, and it was uh, dew tones using um, a technique where they just use two layers and they're using yellow and blue and the yellow layer is simply a layer that is bleached and um, here is that article on alternative photography website um, and I'll put a link to this because it is very helpful um, but I so I had several problems getting any of these processes to work until I figured it out which I'll explain as we move along but um, I like how his technique works with the two tones I just don't quite like the colors and that's just me personally I don't like the yellow blue green only um, it does work in some situations but it just wasn't for me um, and I do recommend these three books you have uh, cyanotype by Christina Z. Anderson. Um, a lot of helpful information on just basic cyanotypes. I mean it goes over almost everything you could go over. The other book which isn't as um, it isn't as detailed specifically to cyanotypes but it has some information that is interesting that can has some other things that aren't necessarily in the one book is the Alternative Photography Process, 3rd edition by Christopher James. That's a very good book and it has a, almost every process that ever was. Not all of them, but almost all of them. So that's a very good book as well. The final book, and probably the maybe not necessarily the most important, but very important when it comes to toning in general, and I highly recommend this book no matter what. Um, even if you don't want the other two this one is very useful and and brilliant um, it's called cyanotype toning by Annette Golaz I, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly um, but she had produced maybe not necessarily the first but her own very unique and and well done technique for tricolor or color full color cyanotype prints um, this book was very helpful in what I developed, but the technique I have is completely different from what she has. I still, I am working on a technique that is similar to hers. I'm using her information as a starting point, but um, for anyone who's wanting to just, even if they're just doing single color toning, I highly recommend this book. The final thing I want to bring your attention to is this article. It's another article on alternative photography. This one dates back to 2010. And all I want to say is they almost had it. <laughs> they, they were so close to um, almost perfecting it. It's, but the article is very, it has some very good information. But... Um, it, it, I don't know it, it it's what I developed 
is very close to what they did with a lot of exceptions but they were on the right track and I, I I'd like to see if I could track down this particular person and see if they did any more with this but I want to put a link to this article as well um, it like I said it's a good article and and they almost had it <laughs> the final thing I want to put in this video is uh, kind of a brief overview of how mine is different from everyone else's. Um, the first, the very first thing is I am not using a very specific printer and a very specific program. Most of these books, the one thing that I will say that I, that I do not like is most of these books refer to a program called Quad Tone Rip which is for making uh, curves for cyanotypes it is as far as I can tell only compatible with certain Epson printers um, to me that's just too limiting um, I don't want to deal with a very specific printer I, I want way more freedom than that um, so I'm going to be using uh, just a plain old Canon Pixma printer and I'll show you how I do that um, the techniques I use for that uh, the other thing there that I mentioned was curves. There's a lot of programs that there, there's some free programs that are good and uh, there's some other programs that it's just it's it's complicated. Um, the basic basically what a curve does is your your um, cyanotype formula has a limited uh, tonal range and so if this is your tonal range when you apply a curve this is how it kind of flattens it out so it'll try to mimic the right um, tonal range in the in the formula when you're printing it um, I just that's actually what held me back um, I had tested just literally hundreds of different methods I couldn't figure out what was wrong and then I tried doing it without the curves at all without the curve programs and that's what made everything I've been working on work a few days ago so this is I'm going to be going into a lot more detail in it like I said this is going to be a series but uh, the basics are it's not complicated and it doesn't require any specific printers or programs to work um, all the editing, all the stuff we're going to be doing in this is in a free photo editor called GIMP. I do not like Adobe or any of those that you have to pay monthly on. That's just ridiculous. Um, so you will be using basically any printer and a free program to do your separations. And the only other thing I'm going to add to this video for the intro is the other thing that I'm doing to make this all work is I am um, I'm changing the formulas so here are some examples of some do tones I tried to make about a year ago um, they were just using the yellow and blue technique uh, I could never get them to look right they always looked absolutely terrible and so I just kinda gave up on that but I was constantly, you know, my brain was constantly nagging me that there was just something I wasn't doing right. So um, I went back to it. And then if you look at these pictures, um, about a year ago I developed, this is where I developed the um, different formula techniques. Um, it worked, but still didn't look right to me and I couldn't figure out what was wrong and I just kind of gave up on it. And that's when recently I started trying it again instead of instead of a three color I thought well maybe it would be simpler if I did a do tone and I was still having the same problem until I found out that the curves were what were actually hindering me and and the what you're seeing the three colors I have up there um, they were overexposed on those so ignore those I was just using them as some tests um, but they, this is what started it. Uh, the formulas are that um, instead of using a classic formula, which is 25, 10, 25% uh, the ferric ammonia citrate and 10% the potassium ferric cyanide, you do a 10% ferric 
ferric ammonia citrate. And then the final layer, the blue layer, and this is the key. This is the absolute key to making this work. The cyan layer is a 5% solution. So that means you take a 10% solution, mix it together, then dilute that in half. Uh, the reason being is it doesn't take a lot of cyan to work for this technique because this is a subtractive color method. So the darker the blue is, it's, it's actually bad. You don't want a lot of blue for it to work properly. And I tried underexposing and that just didn't work. So I actually changed the formula and that worked perfectly. And then like I said, that's where I got held up with the curves and then but we'll we'll get into that. So that's the end of this video and uh in the next video we're going to go over picking the right subject and you know what what photos will look good with it and all of that. So I will see you in the next video.